Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. A very happy hump day to you all. This is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this reading is dated for the when for the <laughs> for the Wednesday. For Wednesday, the 25th of September, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on that day. This can resonate at any time for you, especially if you're watching this reading after the 25th of December. December? What? Good God, Eric, do not end the year already. It is only September. <laughs> Sorry, but if you're watching this, okay, so fine. If you're watching this in December, right? And, and it's resonating with for you, then that's the message for you at that moment in time. All right, guys? Okay, fair warning. Before we go any further, I am having an allergy attack. I was fine all morning. I got up, I did my yoga, I did my stretches, I did my meditation, I made my coffee, I sat, I cleaned up my desk, I got ready to go, I sat down at my desk and my face started to explode. The worst part about it is I am all out of antihistamines. Ugh. So I am so sorry, I sincerely apologize. I almost went out to the pharmacy around the corner to go pick up some. I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll just be starting a little bit late, that's fine. But then I realized it doesn't open for another half an hour. I'm not sitting here waiting for a half an hour just to go get antihistamines, wasting time. We're just gonna power through it, <laughs> okay? So I apologize. I'm gonna do my best to keep the sniffles at a minimum. If I have to blow my nose, I will cut the sound so you don't have to listen to it. Um, and I'm gonna try not to sneeze as much as possible, but. It was just, I found that to be quite ironic. Okay, so let's get into the energies for today. Um, the pre-shuffle today is really quite nice. And I just, rec I just realized that I never looked at the other side of the overall energy, but already we have nine of cups here, okay? But the first thing that came shooting out of the deck was the nine of swords in reverse. Oh, no, wait, I do know what's on the other side of the deck, okay. The Nine of Swords came out in reverse, and the Nine of Swords was part of the message yesterday. Um, it was this side of the card, right? But now it's this side, where we're seeing the figure that's actually sitting there facing all of these swords. It's in reverse now, and, and this could either mean that it's a blockage, like you're stuck in this energy, or it could mean that you're releasing this energy, or someone is releasing this energy. And I do feel like someone here, whether it's you or so, a counterpart, or someone you're connected to, or maybe even someone you're watching for. Sorry, guys. I do feel like someone is releasing this fear and anxiety. Why? We have the Three of Pentacles here, okay? The Three of Pentacles is a card of self-mastery, but also teamwork. And I had to read about this side of the card here because you only have one person on this side of the card. Normally you see three individuals working towards building something. And then I looked at this side of the card and we have the other two figures. Okay, we have the actual, the craftsman and it looks like a clergyman because this kind of looks like they're building a church, right? And then on this side you have what looks to be a businessman or a financier. Okay, well, Intuitively, when I looked at this card, I was channeling that this individual standing here is saying, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to work together. I'm ready for teamwork. I'm ready to be a team player. I'm ready to build this together. Especially since we have this nine of swords energy in reverse here, okay? But then I wanted to double check and make sure. So I went into the book and I read about it and it literally, that's exactly what it means. This is in fact the financier, um, that is l basically looking for partners to work with, okay? Looking for like-minded people to start building. And that's what I was picking up on, all right? We have the Four of Cups here, but with the Hanged Man. And it seems, it seems that a missed opportunity or, uh, uh, yes, okay, that's what it is. A missed opportunity, or in other words, someone's ship having sailed off and left the scene, right? has influenced someone towards, or is influencing someone towards changing their perspective. And it's this side of the hanged man in which we see the two individuals that were 
being indoctrinated by the Hierophant earlier in the major arcana cycle, who are now standing in front of the hanged man saying, oh my God, there are other ways to look at this. Yup. Yup, there sure are. And I just heard that if you're dealing with a counterpart situation, both of you are being influenced by this energy, regardless of whoever walked away. Because I do feel like, like say if we're talking Twin Flames, um, obviously, like, well, not obviously, but chances are the masculine ran first, right? And then the feminine, like, spiraled into dark night of the soul, blah, 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 went through that whole purging process, emerged from that, and now the feminine is maybe the dynamic did switch. Maybe it switched from the feminine being the chaser to the feminine being the runner, and now the masculine's the runner, okay? I'm sorry, the masculine's the chaser, okay? Or it could just be that the feminine went through her thing, she rose from that, and then she decided to just move on. It's not that she's necessarily running, okay? Maybe slightly, maybe there's a little bit of running going on, but it's mostly just like, look, I d I'm, I'm done with this toxicity. I'm done with all this bullshit. Like, I'm just going to move on. I've learned my lesson here. Thank you for awakening. Thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for awakening me, but it's time for me to go. Okay. And so she moved on. That was a change in perspective. But then also as she continued to move on, there was even more of a change in perspective. And that has been coming through in the inner feminine, inner masculine readings that I was doing. Um, it was the very first one that I did actually, your inner feminine, connecting with your inner feminine. The, the hanged man kept coming out. It came out like three different times in that reading from three different decks. And so the change in perspective was big. The feminine energies really have been working on a change in perspective lately, okay? But we could, I think, uh, uh, to be quite honest, I feel like we're talking about the masculine here. You know what? No. I'm not going to say that. It's both. If we're talking, if we're talking twin flames, if we're talking counterparts here, if we're even, it doesn't even have to be twin flames. It could just be a romantic relationship that you're having trouble with or something like that, but not whatever. Okay. We don't even have to be talking about romance. We could be talking about anything. We could be talking about business, three of pentacles. All right. We could be, we could be talking about your career, your creative project. Your, maybe you're looking for, maybe you're an artist and you're looking for some sort of financial support, or maybe you're starting a business because the Three of Pentacles is the card of, of the entrepreneur. Maybe you're trying to start a business and you've been really anxious about it um, and things didn't go quite as you had planned. Ships sailed, but then there was a change in perspective that is allowing you to be ready for this now, okay? That was all part of your process, all right? So either way, and oh, so I'll go back. If we are talking about twin flames or divine counterparts or whatever, both of you have gone through a change in perspective. And it really does feel like both of you here are ready to start working together. Now, the other reason why I was trying, I was picking up on how I could possibly be talking to, speaking for the masculine energies here because on the other side of the overall energy we have the king of wands and the king of wands came out yesterday and it's this side of the card in which his fateful salamander turns into this massive snake at night and they go through they have this moment of like discussing things um the snake is a symbol of wisdom okay it helps you or in in this deck and how they describe it in the book the snake the, the, the conversation that the king is having with his his trust trusty snake trustful like he can trust this per, this individual because of the wisdom that the snake embodies but the conversation that he's having with the snake has a lot to do with conformity and or societal structure societal whatnot whatever or social norms you can see this as another depiction of breaking free from some sort of dogma or conformity or whatnot, whatever, symbolized by the Hierophant, which we have um, a, a testament to, I guess, in the two individuals standing in front of the hanged man here, okay? It's a very similar conversation. It's a very similar conversation. It's a very similar energy here between the hanged man and the king of wands, at least this side of the king of wands. Now, specifically, when it comes to the king of wands, this conversation that he would be having with his snake um, has to do with his own free will, his own drive, what he wishes to accomplish. I do feel like for whomever this is, now this could either be the masculine or the feminine, okay? It doesn't have to be just the masculine because it's the king. 
we can be talking general here in just the message of what this card represents. But, um, oh shoot, now I lost it. I totally just lost my train of thought. Oh, so in terms of what you want to do, how you want to express yourself is what I just heard specifically. Um, the direction you want to move in, what it is you want to pursue, what it is you truly desire that you may have been holding yourself back from because of the dogma. But here now with the hanged man, you're gaining a new perspective on that. Because the, the, the wand suit is about passion and desire, lust, sure, creativity, spiritual reality, spiritual nature, um, spirituality, um, going after what it is you want, doing what it is you want. That's what the, the wands suit represents. And the king of wands is specifically an energy of someone that just doesn't give a fuck what other people think and is gonna do what they wanna do regardless of what other people say. This is another also reason why the king of wands can represent uh, narcissism. Um, and I, out of all of the kings in the deck, the king of wands, in my opinion, represents narcissism or narcissistic tendencies the strongest okay but that's not what we're talking about here all right there's balance there's definitely balance and order in terms of this situation and there, there there's wish fulfillment coming through with it okay in, in what form what shape that wish fulfillment is actually going to take can't really tell you right now but but it's manifesting it's coming it's happening. Somehow, some way, it's happening. Whatever this is for you, okay? Cool. So, let's get into the rest of the reading. Excuse me, guys, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> Good God, I'm falling apart. <laughs> Actually, I'm pulling my pieces back together. Woo! But here we go, okay. children screaming outside it is too early for all that noise <laughs> don't you have to be in school <laughs> i'm kidding all right here we go last shuffle all right let's get into it hi spirit Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. What is it that you would like to discuss with us today, Spirit? Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this four shuffles today. Four, you say? That's right, I said four. <laughs> For the collective. That's two. We've got three. And four all right kids for our wednesday september 25th 2019 let's see what we got all right here we go oops there's some spirit says we're doing two passes okay so we're gonna do two passes my eyes are closed so i don't know what's fallen out so far all right last one Ooh. Ooh. Okay. All right. That was a lot. Oh boy. Okay. Overall energy is the Empress with the Eight of Cups. Okay. The Empress. Eight of Cups. Interesting. We have Justice, the Star. The Ace of Wands, which seems to be in reverse here. Six of Cups, 
Two of Cups. Five of Swords, Seven of Cups. All right. Yeah, okay. Um, so I kind of see what's happening here. What's what this is talking about. Uh, we do have the Ace of Wands. It is in reverse, though, and and to be honest, that doesn't surprise me, okay? Um, yes, there is, there is some sort of desire or impetus to move. Is that even the right word? I've been saying that. I don't know. It is. Okay. Um, there's some sort of inspiration or desire even to move forward. OK, um, but with the ace and, and it's perfect that it's this side of the ace of wands in which there is a stroke of lightning that's happening. I often see now. Well, it's actually this deck that has helped me see the ace of wands as um, a minor arcana version of the tower, mainly because of this 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 stroke of lightning that's hitting. But then but it makes sense because. The, the the tower is often a really intense moment where something suddenly changes. Okay, um, so it could something could be destroyed or something could suddenly come to be, and you never really even, you know, you were not expecting it. Often it's destructive in nature, but even in its destruction, it's cr also creative in nature because that gives space that leaves space for something or create space for something new potentially better hopefully better to be built or put it back in its place right so with this ace of wands here the inspiration is coming through all right and that's kind of what i'm what i was picking up on with oh god what was it what was it what was it uh the nine of swords in reverse with what was the other card now in our pre-shuffle good god i don't remember give me a second uh, the nine of it was the nine of swords, the three of pentacles. Nine of swords was in reverse. Three of pentacles was upright. I feel like there was something specific. Oh, right. Sorry, the hanged man. There it was, um, and also even the the king of wands that was in in a, in a, like a conversation. Okay, with this wise being represented by the snake the, the, you know assimilating gaining cultivating some some type of wisdom and, and, and having a discussion yes and also with the hanged man the change in perspective so I'm actively seeing this ace of wands in reverse as the change in perspective that's coming to be okay um, we have justice and we have the star so there's some things that need to be worked through OK, justice is being brought into the situation. And that's what I'm seeing with this Ace of Wands. OK, justice is being served. It, it, OK, spirit wants me to describe this to you. Um, and I'm kind of avoiding it because it, I feel like it might confuse some people. They're saying, yes, it will confuse some people, but the right people will understand what you're saying. OK, so think of it this way. Time is an illusion. Yes, time doesn't really actually exist. It's just a construct of our three-dimensional reality. It's something that we have agreed upon to follow to help us make sense of our reality, okay? To help keep order in our reality. The third dimension is very much about order, right? Okay. So, spiritually speaking, or energetically speaking, the lightning is in the process of striking, right? But it's instantaneous when you think about it in terms of time, okay? It happens just like that, okay? But when you when you zoom out, everything, everything in existence is happening all at once. So it's like it's like we're in the process. If you were to if we were here in the three-dimensional world and we say we like we we put it on slow-mo, yeah? The the lightning is in the process of striking, okay? Um so the wisdom is coming in. As this wisdom come in, comes in, conversations are had, thought process are mulled through, processes are mulled through, um, shifts are happening, shifts in perspectives are happening. This, this may seem, yes, a stroke of lightning might be an instantaneous thing, but because energy works so quickly, so much is happening as this lightning is striking. So it's coming out in reverse right now for us because 
again, it's in slow-mo, and the lightning is in the process of streaking through the air and striking, and, and, and changes are being made because of that, okay? Justice is being served here in this lightning striking. Healing is happening with the star. Wish fulfillment is coming through here with the star. And I do feel like if we're talking about counterparts, this is all mutual energy, okay? Wish fulfillment and justice is being served for both individuals. Now, here, right here, is what we're working through. Now, I do wanna say we are, we. Uh, for the most part here, we are talking about counterparts, okay? Because we do have the Two of Cups, all right? And the relationship between these two is actually coming to light. Whether someone is talking about it or not, whether someone is, I don't know, making it known, declaring the relationship, saying, uh, you know, uh, speaking about it to their friends when in the past they may have been trying to hide it or not talking about it at all or maybe not even acknowledging it, I'm not sure. I don't know about all that. But what I do know is consciously, whether you're talking about it or not, it's starting to become apparent to you. It's starting to become, it's starting to come to the forefront of your mind. It's starting to actually materialize in the mind or perceptually. Again, regardless of whether you're talking about it or not, okay? But here's the kicker. Five of swords, seven of cups. That Five of Swords energy. Someone in the past, someone looked like they had the upper hand. But they didn't. They really didn't. It only made things worse. And now, Seven of Cups here, it's... It's like you're, you've, whomever this is, and this really could, this honestly, this really could be both of you, all right, um, that are, that are in this Seven of Cups energy. Obviously, one, one, one person won over on the other, but with the Five of Swords here, there are no winners. This is a lose-lose. I just saw 22-22. Oh, goodness. I've been seeing 2-2-2 two, two, two a lot lately, and 22 and I've also been seeing double numbers like 1313 or 2121 or whatever. So I just saw a 2222. That's beautiful. But anyway, um, yes, on the surface, it may have looked like somebody came out on top. But in reality, both people lost here. And the person that came out on top actually lost more than the other person because now we got to figure out how to reconcile. And with this Seven of Cups here, it's this dark side of the Seven of Cups where we see that this, I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but we see this individual is blind and he's wandered away from home and he's now wandered into a marsh and he's, not only is he blind, but now he's in a marsh and he has no idea how he's going to get out of here. And he's just terrified. And he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm taking shots in the dark here. Well, now you got to come out of this Five of Swords energy. I just saw 23, 23, good God. <laughs> now you gotta come out of this Five of Swords energy. And while both of you may have lost and both of you may not know really how to rec reconcile this, the one person that looks like they came out on top, it feels like they have a, a greater responsibility to, to reconcile to bring healing to the situation. It kind of feels like it's this, it's this individual that, that basically got the upper hand, and yes, I did put that in air quotes for a reason, got the upper hand, now has to figure out, it is their response, it's more their responsibility to either to initiate some sort of reconciliation or to apologize in some way. Both of you probably have a lot to apologize for. I'm not gonna lie that, I'm not gonna lie there. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say, you know, only one person needs to, needs to apologize. No, both of you probably need to apologize to each other, okay? Both of you probably need to reconcile and to heal. But it feels like the responsibility is on the shoulders of the heaviest part of the responsibility is on the shoulders of whomever feels like or whomever looked like they had the upper hand at first. 
And it could also be for the sheer fact that maybe this person that looks like, feels like they had the upper hand, like blocked you or something like that. And like, you're at a point now where it's like, well, look, I, I, I still love this person, two of cups. I still love this person. I would be willing to work things out with this person, but after things went down the way they did, I do not feel comfortable reaching out because you're the one that blocked me first. You're the one that told me to fuck off first. You're to, you're the one that told to told me you didn't want to talk to me first. So I'm not trying to go back on that. And yeah, sure, I may have said the same thing after the fact, but right now, what I'm hearing is right now it's on you. If this is what you want, if this is what you want, then say something. But also, this is, okay, so that's a stalemate right there. That sure is a stalemate right there. Oof. I don't know how to heal that. Or I mean to say, I don't know what to say to help you guys heal that one. <laughs> I don't. But we have the Two of Cups with the Six of Pentacles here. We've got to figure out how to reconcile here. We've got to figure out how to make this balanced and reciprocal is what this says. Okay. Now we do have abundance with the Empress. And we have walking away with the Eight of Cups, but this is leaving. This is leaving the past behind. Um, I'm feeling like this is getting back to the inner child. Getting back to your innocence in a way. It could be leaving behind all of the things that you have accumulated as you've grown into a, an adult, like, like shedding all of that and getting back to the core of who you are, getting back to your inner child energies, getting back to your innocence, to your truth, and looking at all of the eight cups that have stacked here and being like, wow, that's not what I wanted at all. Or I'm getting, I'm also getting a kind of a feeling of, being, of saying something like, wow, that went left. <laughs> wow, that really went left, didn't it? The Empress is symbolizing abundance here. And I'm getting an energy of like not really being focused on the situation at hand. Mm -mm, probably the feminine here. Uh, but I don't really want to classify it like that. Maybe both of you are not really all that focused on it. You're just allow. maybe you're allowing it to gestate. Okay, that makes sense because the Empress can represent fertility and birth, right? So maybe both of you or maybe one of you, sure, or both of you maybe have like turned away from the situation for a while just to get your mind off of it, allow things to just grow and blossom. But that's what I feel like. I don't feel like that's like a... a something that's just now happened. I feel like that's been an energy for a while, which is helping to move things along or is helping to shift things, okay? I don't know, this five of, all right, we're gonna move into the clarifications, clarification section. I, I wanna talk about this five of swords, seven of cups. And I just heard again, okay, yes, one person did have the upper hand in the situation, but I heard it's not what you think, or it didn't turn out exactly how they wanted it to be, or if this is you, it didn't turn out how you wanted it to be. Backstabbing, betrayal. This is a lose-lose situation. There is no real winner here. There is no winner here. And just speaking on behalf of what I know that has gone on collectively, this feels, this feels like it's the masculine here. That won, but did he really? No, he didn't. There are no there are no winners here. This is a lose lose situation. We're gonna get some clarity on that.
and then I want to see what spirit has to say about it. So we're going to go, we're going to clarify these energies a little bit more, and then we're going to use the Golden Universal Tarot to see what advice spirit has on this, because this feels like, I mean, this is where you're moving. This is where you want to go. Six of Pentacles, Two of Cups, okay? Balance and reciprocity and a union or a coming together of individuals that love each other, regardless of the fucking labels, <laughs> okay? But this is what's standing in your way. Five of Swords, Seven of Cups, figuring out how to get around or get away from this Five of Swords energy, this tension that has built this destructiveness. Last shuffle. We're gonna get some clarity on that. Just wanna clarify these energies a little bit more. Get a little bit more on what this actually is. Five of Swords, Seven of Cups. Okay. Overall energy, we have Temperance. Okay, Patience, first of all. Alchemy, Balancing bringing together two opposing sides. Um, I am getting an energy of differing of opinion with temperance here. And, and bringing that together, I'm being shown the king and the queen of swords again. A few days ago, was it Monday, where the king and the queen of swords came out together? Um, and the king sees, it, sees, the, sees the situation one way, the queen sees it another way, 31-31. Um, but it's about bringing those two together. It's about working on seeing eye to eye to each other. You don't necessarily have to completely 100% agree. That's kind of what makes the dynamics of the relationship. Ooh, I just heard so groundbreaking. You're not necessarily going to agree on everything, but you can at least find a common ground. Okay. And that's what, Ooh, that's the big lesson in all of this here between this, with this five of swords, seven of cups energy. Okay, so it's not as bad as you think. All right, we have the Eight of Pentacles, we have the Three of Pentacles, we have the Queen of Wands, we have the Ace of Wands, and we have the Five of Pentacles, but the Five of Pentacles is in reverse. And that's pretty significant because I don't tend to read reversals unless they come out this way. Like, everything in the deck is upright, but this was mistakenly Put that in air quotes for a reason. Miss 3232, good God. Mistakenly um, put back in the deck reverse, but it came out. And so, good. Five of Pentacles in reverse is an excellent energy. Also, with the Nine of Swords in reverse that came out earlier, excellent energy. This is the release. It could mean a blockage. Okay, in the past it was the blockage. It's not the blockage anymore. Now this is being released, feelings of inadequacy. And that probably is what gave rise to this energy. I don't feel adequate. I feel threatened. Therefore, I'm going to attack you and I'm going to hurt you before you can hurt me. That's what this Five of Swords energy is saying in relation to this Five of Pentacles that's being released. The feelings of inadequacy, the feelings of um, lack, right? Well, yes, that is very much a lose-lose situation because most likely this person that came forward that makes you feel, or that felt like you were, they were threatening you wasn't trying to threaten you at all. It's actually the exact opposite. This person loves you. But because of your own inner wounds, we'll say, Five of Pentacles, feelings of inadequacy. You took it as a threat or someone took it as a threat and fought back viciously, like literally tried to tear this person down. Well, now you got to figure out how to come back out of it. Seven of Cups. Well, that's good. It's happening. We have the Eight of Pentacles with the Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles has come out again. Three of Pentacles came out in the pre-shuffle. We're ready to work together. 34, 34. This is crazy, you guys. Anyway, we're ready to work together. Or I'm ready to work together. 
I'm ready to rebuild this bridge. I'm ready to rebuild. I'm ready to do this. See? Ace of Wands. There it is. That is what is inspiring. That's what's leading this. Queen of Wands now. Interesting. Magnetic is what I'm hearing. Magnetism. Oh. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> By leaving this alone and just allowing yourself to be receptive here by not taking so much action here that has allowed this situation to evolve and grow and is allowing perspectives to change by focusing on being in the receptive mode that's what i'm getting from that that's interesting it's really interesting okay i like it so now let's get some advice from spirit here on this and use the golden universal tarot yeah this is really the only thing i want to talk about here because this is the most challenging aspect this is literally look guys i'm not i mean i'm I, sh I shit you not this is literally this five of swords with the seven of cups is literally what's going on with this ace of wands here this is the inspiration that's coming through this is the i guess you could say the mini tower moment that someone or you are having Okay, beautiful. All right, cool. So, this being the only thing I really wanna clarify, now I wanna get some messages from spirit, some divine wisdom here to help, uh, to help us move through this situation. <sighs> okay, thanks guys. Um, so the three of pentacles is about, is about teamwork, is about rebuilding, okay, is about self-mastery also. The eight of pentacles is about craftsmanship, is about doing the hard work, is about working tirelessly, is about, um, yeah, perfection. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. Perfectionism, yeah, okay, but... But it's about perfecting your art, not about being perfect, but 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 uh, honing your skill, that kind of thing. That's the type of energy that the Eight of Pentacles is representing. Uh, that the End of Pentacles represents. And so, coupled with the Three of Pentacles here, this is this is a very good thing. This is this situation really is turning around. And for the most part, most of this is just energetic at the moment, but that's okay because that's where everything starts. Everything is energy first. And then it physically manifests into the world. So the Empress energy here really is talking about gestation. All right. 30. Jeez, you guys. I mean, this is, this is nuts. Ooh. Okay. What's this? The Magician. I just heard magic happens. Ooh. King of Cups is on the bottom of the deck here. All right. So Spirit's saying that you guys are manifesting this fully by taking honest responsibility of yourselves king of cups the king of cups to me represents yes someone that is very much in love okay but also someone that is um, emotionally responsible emotionally mature is willing to take responsibility for their actions and is also willing to move in terms of make act make moves in terms of what it is their heart is calling for okay uh, taking action or moving against, or not against, but moving towards what their heart's desire is. Someone that is not afraid of that at all. Someone that is not afraid to have an open heart. Lead with their heart. Spirit's advice here with this, with this magician card that came flying out as I was shuffling, you are responsible for your manifestations. No one else is responsible for what you manifest in your life other than you. You cannot blame anyone else for the circumstances that you find yourself in. You can't. You are master manifestors, says Spirit. What you have going on in your external reality is a direct reflection of what you have, what you have going on, on your, in your internal reality. So it may look like on the external that, I don't know, the government, your boss, your parents, your twin, your, I don't know, your teachers, your whomever, 
all these people external to you may be ref or maybe influencing your situation or maybe creating the circumstances that you live under but all but ultimately you have the power the magician you have the power to change it whether you like it or not whether you want to believe it or not and there are going to be many people around you that want to continue to control you that tell you no actually you don't have that power yes you do and the only reason they would be telling you that they don't that you don't have that power is because what they still want to control you they want you to put all your power in their hands if you want to change your reality then you've got to take your power back let's see what else Ooh, this is a big old stack okay we have the eight of cups yep seven of swords king of pentacles justice the star ten of swords four of wands and the page of swords and underneath the deck overall energy we have judgment holy shit underneath the deck we have judgment with two of cups and ace of pentacles what else Ooh, there's the tower <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> okay. Look, this is, guys, this is literally what I was talking about. It's time to leave the deception behind. You hold the power of the universe in your hands. You have the, 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 the power that creates worlds at your disposal. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop telling yourself that you don't. Honestly, it's time to let go of this. It's time for you to take your power back and to manifest the way you want to. King of Pentacles, bring justice. That is the justice that needs to be served here for many of us. Be the master manifester. Um, Ten of Swords, Four of Wands, the Star, and the Page of Wands. I'm seeing the Page of Swords as following the star energy here. Following the light, okay? Seeking guidance also is what I'm getting. So really, if you are seeking guidance, you need to stop... You need to stop seeking guidance ex outside of you and you need to start seeking guidance internally from within. Because that's really the only guidance that's really going to be the best guidance for you because it's coming from your higher self. It's coming from the universe. It's coming from sources that see the, your, see the picture from a, from a higher perspective, but also who are aware of your challenges and what it is you wish to manifest and what it is you're trying to accomplish here in your life in this incarnation okay ten of swords four of wands the worst is behind you all right and there is a really solid foundation here really solid foundation and it may not seem like that right now but spirit is absolutely assuring you that you have a very very solid foundation and the worst is absolutely behind you here because it's, it seems like even though we don't have the Page of Cups or even like the Six of Cups, which could talk about officially making amends, I just heard someone is ready to make amends here. And it may be both of you. It absolutely may be both of you. I just heard time will tell. And I guess you could see the Two of Cups as making amends. Reconciliation. Okay. Yeah. Coming together. Sure. This is good. Don't rush this. You don't have to rush into anything. You don't have to feel like you have to say anything right away. Like if you're not, if you're not feeling it right now, if, if, if you're still feeling some sort of resistance towards it, maybe work through that first. For some of you though, requiring yourself to work through that resistance first might actually, <laughs> might actually be a bit of um, pr uh, uh, procrastination. For some of you, you may just need to like bite the bullet and do it, but take that with a grain of salt. Consult yourself first before you 
like don't take my word for that. Take your own advice there. You know what I mean? <laughs> 44, 44. All right, kids. So let's close the reading now with our light worker, with an oracle guidance from the light worker oracle. Now, somebody asked yesterday, and I got caught up and forgot to reply, but the oracle deck that I used yesterday was the light worker oracle as well by Alana Fairchild, this one. And that's what we're using today, okay? Two more shuffles here. All right. Let's see what we've got for today. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. Oracle guidance for today's reading. Ooh. That's a lot. This one wants to come out too. Okay. Wow. That is a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. But bear with me here. We have card number three, third ray of creative intelligence. Third card number 33, master healing. Card number 22, initiation by fire. And card number 38, which boils down to 11, earth healing. Whoa, guys. Whoa. That's intense. There are a lot of oracle messages here today. I'm going to read all of them. But this is so cool. I mean, look at this. These are three master numbers. Three master numbers because 38 boils down to an 11. You have 20, you have you have 33, you have 22, and you have 38, which is 11. And then you have three. I mean, this is so cool. This is just so cool. All right, I'm going to put these in chronological order. Or, nu yeah, numerical order so that I can, it's easier to deal with in the book. But we're going to read at least the snippets of all of these cards. Third Ray of Creative Intelligence. The third ray of creative intelligence brings the gift of practical spirituality and develops the talent for grounding inspired creativity into the world, which can be seen as the spark of creation here with the Ace of Wands. And even the, ta wait, hold on, let me get that out here. Two of Cups, just uh, Judgment, Page, uh, I'm sorry, Ace of Pentacles, and that good old Tower. Ooh, I'm curious. Ooh, Nine of Cups underneath the Tower. Okay, I see you. <laughs> I'm going to stop there because I could go on forever. But... You could see that in the creative expression, uh, the spark of creation in the Ace of Wands and also the Tower energy that we were talking about, yes? I'm going to read that again. The third ray of creative intelligence brings the gift of practical spirituality and develops the talent for grounding inspired creativity into the world. It empowers, em, I'm sorry, it empowers your manifestation. This ray brings many gifts, including new ideas and the practical support needed to bring them to life, the ability to organize, make connections and networks, and synthesize information from various sources into one coherent whole. Archangel Shamuel helps you receive this gift from the universe with love and intelligence. Beautiful. Card number 22 is next, Initiation by Fire. Initiation by fire is a life-changing spiritual cleansing. Your life will never be the same again. Allow the power of divine fire to clear and purify you inside and out. This is not a time to hold on to anything, no matter how much you once believed you needed it. In letting go, you will gain so much more than you ever imagined, opening to fresh blessings and new life. You are, like the phoenix, ready to emerge from the holy flames reborn wow archangel michael rolling on through <laughs> okay next we have card number 33 sorry for the sniffles guys okay master healing as you meditate remain true to what inspires your heart and commit to your spiritual path 
Oh, I'm sorry. Let me say that again. I, I, my, uh, let me say that again. As you meditate, remain true to what inspires your heart and commit to your spiritual path, you become an increasingly powerful healer. You are here to live your own life, to be true to what genuinely moves you. The unconditionally loving guide and ascended master Serapis Bay comes to you now with a blessing of master healing to further your success on your path. Um. Oh gosh, I'm not done yet. I want to read this card. Um. Okay. The Master Serapis Bay is a beloved guide for those who feel a strong soul connection to ancient Egypt, for healers who are developing their own modalities, and those who work to love, I'm sorry, those who love to work with high frequency concepts. He also assists with the translation of spiritual inspiration into practical worldly plans. He comes to confirm that the Ascended Masters are aware of you. You are an integral part of a powerful spiritual team that has taken physical incarnation to help awaken consciousness into love. You are asked to tune into your heart. What do you love enough to overcome any obstacles to obtain? What motivates and inspires you? Not what seems, imp what seems possible or practical, but what is authentic. That is really important. Let me say that again. Not what seems possible or practical, but what is authentic? We are most powerful when we serve authentically from the heart. A bird might learn how to dive underwater from time to time, but it is never going to be at its most powerful if it has to live underwater. It would struggle to thrive if it were there, I'm sorry, if it were to force itself into such unnatural expressions of its life energy. The bird yearns to fly because that is its divine nature and purpose. You too have a divine nature and purpose and your heart holds the clue. What feels most like to you? It is difficult to access the truth of our own nature when we believe we should live up to the expectations of others. If we are attached to an outcome or afraid of an answer, we can unintentionally block our perceptive faculties, a spiritual version of sticking our fingers in our ears and shouting blah, 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 which is something I've been doing a lot lately. I'm not gonna lie. Like spirit has been like sending me all these messages and I'm just like blah, 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 whatever spirit. And they're like, okay, you can ignore us all you want, but it's not gonna help you. <laughs> The blessing of Serapis Bay includes his clear flame of divine cleansing light. This can assist us in letting go of whatever blocks us from knowing the truth of our nature. When we are willing to be who we are, the universe can more easily guide us to fulfill our destinies. Serapis Bay will help you see yourself truthfully. You may gain feedback from others that helps you understand the value of what you are. Or you may simply find it easier to view yourself objectively with a compassionate, appreciative, and discerning inner eye. As you learn to accept who you are, you become a more powerful vibration for masters to put to use in the plan of love. If you have a dream in your heart, know that it has been placed there for a divine purpose. What you dream and desire contains the seeds of divinity. It is meant to help attract your life mission and fulfill it with love, joy, creativity, and pleasure. If we are willing to go through what is necessary for an outcome, it will happen for us. The details may appear different from what we imagined they would, but the truth remains. If you ask for something and are willing to go through the process required to have, what, to have that come to life, it will happen for you. The universe is that generous, unconditionally supportive, and loving of, of you. It is your creative partner. It will provide you with all that you need to manifest your dreams, desires, and destiny. I wanna, I wanna read that one more time. The details may appear different from what we imagined they would, but the truth remains. If you ask for something and are willing to go through the process required to have that come to life, it will happen for you. The universe is that generous, unconditionally supportive, and loving of you. It is your creative partner. It will provide you with all that you need to manifest your dreams, desires, and destiny. So there you have it, guys. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee. Oh, wait. 
Wait, hold on. I didn't read card 38. Oh my God, Eric. How could I forget card 38? Who are you right now? <laughs> okay, card 38. Earth healing. You are making a real contribution to the planet through your spiritual journey. Remember this and believe that your needs will be generously met by the earth and the universe. What you are doing matters and you will be supported. Okay, we're going to leave it there. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.